fiery horse with the speed of light, a cloud of dust to the hearty Hayo Silver, the Lone Ranger. <laughs> After the Union Pacific Railroad was finished, many eastern businessmen came to the western United States eager to develop the great natural resources of the country. They were followed by confidence men who formed companies and floated stock issues with the sole purpose of robbing the honest settlers. The masked rider of the plains fought these criminals within the law in the same way he fought the outlaws of an earlier period. In time, his courage and resourcefulness put an end to their activities and cleared the way once more for the winning of the West. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoof beats of the great horse Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver! We're heading for Soul Creek Valley! Hail, Silver! Away! <laughs> The two daughters and three sons of old Sarah Yates were gathered together in the home of the eldest, Ezra. The attention of all five was centered on the man who had just risen from his chair, and now his coat across his arm was making ready to leave. I think that's all. You understand the situation. The Red River Short Line means business. It's fully organized, has backing of some of the most responsible men in the state, but only one thing is lacking. As yet, we haven't been able to get title to Salt Creek Valley. The moment we do, our crews will commence laying rail. I hope you can help us. Mr. Harvey will do our best. Thank you. I'm sure you will. Well, my time's up. You know where to reach me? Sure. You're staying at the hotel, ain't you? Uh, yes. I'll be there for several weeks. Well, good day. Goodbye, good Mr. Day, Harvey. Good day, Mr. Harvey. Well, what do you think? Ezra, yes, if Ma don't sell, she's local. Real fright. 5000 in cash and 30% of the voting stock. That's a mighty handsome offer. Mother could be rich. I hear railroads are making money hand over fist. Sure they are. But, but Mother doesn't want to sell. She did, but Mr. Harvey have had to come to us. Mother's getting old. But she knows her own mind, Ben. That ain't the point. It ain't fair to us, that's what. Someday what Ma has is going to be ours. Here's a chance for a fortune. If she turns it down, it's us she's cheating. Just so. Oh, I see. Then you're not worried about Mother after all. You're worried about yourself. Peg, you just don't savvy. I say that, but I think I do. Wouldn't you like to have a lot of money someday, Peg? Of course I would, but not this way. Well, I'm not particular. Don't argue with her, Marge. The Peg's just won again us four anyhow. I guess what she thinks ain't going to stop us. It's Ma we'll have to deal with. Or Miguel. Huh? Well, ain't it on account of Miguel that Ma won't sell? Don't you reckon she'd sell if he was to clear out? I'll bet she would. Then why not see Miguel first? Wouldn't that be more sensible? Well, that's what I meant. That's just what we'll do. Good, good idea. Oh, I think you're hateful. Now, look, Peg. You're all anxious to see Mother get rich so that someday you'll be rich. You don't care one least bit what Mother thinks. And now you're talking about getting Miguel to clear out. The valley's the only home Miguel's ever had. Where would he go? Where could he go? 
Don't you ever think of anyone but yourself? If we don't, who will? Mother promised Miguel that as long as she lived, he could stay in Salt Creek Valley. Well, Ma wouldn't be breaking her promise if he was to leave without her asking, would she? He'd never leave willingly. Oh, I don't know. He wouldn't want to stand in Ma's way. Well, if it weren't for Miguel, we, we wouldn't be here. We don't Mother care. Mother told you about it. I know she has. Before she and Father were ever married, Miguel hid Father for three months when the Taylors would have killed him. They'd have killed Miguel, too, if they'd guessed what he was doing. Oh, we owe him everything. Huh. That's past and done with. All right, I can't stop you, but I won't have anything to do with it. Don't, then. Well, who'll talk to Miguel? I will. When? Just as soon as I can get there. It'll take you three or four days to ride to his place. And the sooner I can get started, the better. Marge. Yeah, Ben? Pack me some grub. I'll saddle up. Salt Creek Valley, long and narrow but fertile, divided Sarah Yates' large holdings of land almost exactly in two. At his lower end, a small cabin nestled within a grove of cottonwoods. And it was here that Miguel made his home with his wife, Rosa. Four days later, Ben Yates was standing outside the cabin talking with Miguel, while Rosa looked on. It was plain to see from Ben's red face that he was rapidly losing control of his temper. So you won't clear out, eh? Senor, this is our home. We are happy here. It is not our wish to leave. What have we got? A few scrubby cows. A couple of goats and a mule so blamed old it can't hardly stand up. This year cabin and the right to use the valley. Uh, you could do better almost anywhere. No, senor. Now, we... Look here. I'll make you one final offer. Five hundred dollars. That's in hard cash. You'll get it the day you pull stakes. Senor, it is no use. You won't take it? No. You realize you don't own this valley? That all I'd have to do is to go to Ma and have her kick you off the place? No, it is not so. The senor is my friend. Then why can't you act like a friend to her? See? You savvy what I mean, all right. I ain't going over all that again. If the railroad could go through this year valley, she'd get a fortune for it. But the senor has spoke of this thing. She does not want to sell. She'll say this to me. You know, I, I'm losing patience with you. I am most sorry. Maybe you'll be sorrier. See? You're trading on a favor you done close to 40 years ago. Well, maybe you can get away with that with Ma, but you can't with me. You don't go down. For two cents, I'd put a boot to your bitches and kick you clear into the next county, you dirty... Senor, I am no longer a young man, nor am I as strong as in the past. But this talk I will not have. No? I must ask you to go. Oh, I'm the one to clear out, huh? See? Si. Why, you dry uh, up old no, fool. No, I'll no, slap no, you no, behind. No, 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 you. Do not arm me, Cal, senor. Please. Let go, man. Help, amigo. Don't help. hurt me. What do you... Let me, Cal, go. Mas, you can't. Then take it. Oh. You want more? Get up on your feet. You hit me. Want more? Blast you. Don't reach for that gun. I'll take it. My hand. Leave your gun where it is. Oh. And hit leather. I'll remember this, mister. And I won't forget it. Now on your way. And you, Miguel. I won't forget you got a pair of crooks for friends. Get up. Get up there. Come on. Get up. Oh, gracias, amigo. Si, si. Miguel, wasn't that Ben Yates? Si. What was the trouble here? He would have us leave the valley, amigo. When we would not, he'd grow angry. Was he sent here by Sarah? No, amigo. The senora know nothing of this. Then what was Ben up to? He speak of a railroad through the valley. A railroad through this valley? See, si. You'd better tell me the whole thing, Miguel. It looks as though Ben were getting ideas. After his talk with Miguel, the Lone Ranger, accompanied by his faithful Indian companion, Tonto, rode on and made camp in a secluded spot several miles away. But at dawn the next morning, he was saddling the great horse, Silver, and... Steady, old fellow. We'll soon be ready. What? What we do? I've already saddled Scout for you, Kimasabi. We're riding. What manner? Last night I thought over what Miguel told us. Uh huh? There's a few more things I mean to find out. In the first place, why would any railroad wish a right away through Salt Creek Valley? This outfit calls itself the Red River Short Line. Well, there are a lot of places in the West that could be profitably tapped by a railroad, but this isn't one of them. Uh -huh. I wonder if this couldn't be a crooked promotion scheme. What you mean? People lose their heads easily, Tonto. Two years ago, the Central Pacific and the Union Pacific completed the line that extends all the way to the coast. Since then, everyone's talked of railroads. You'd think you would only delay track anywhere to make a fortune. Now, crooks aren't likely to overlook the opportunity to take advantage of that attitude. Perhaps this is an example. Maybe you're right. And I want to know just who's behind this Red River short line. Uh. As far as I know, they haven't put down a single mile of track. 
How you find out? Jim Burgess at the state capitol would know. If he doesn't, it wouldn't take him long to learn. Uh, yep, a call, Scout. Yes, Scout. We'll find Burgess and see what he has to say. That's a good idea. Ready? Uh, get him up, Scout. Oh, Silver, how are With Ben's return, another family council was called at Ezra's home. It was Ralph, the youngest brother, who put into words what all were thinking. Well, we might as well face it. If Miguel can't be reached, then there's nothing to do but talk to Ma. Ain't gonna be easy, but it'll have to be done. And you talk to her. I done my share. Uh, maybe Ezra better. He's the oldest. Not me. She'd bite my head off. Oh, uh, Marty, would you... Uh... Oh, oh, no, you don't. I'm no more anxious to face her than Ezra is. It'll have to be one of you three. Well, I won't. I suppose I'm to do everything. But you're... Wait! Yeah? This ain't getting us no place. When you come down to it, there ain't a one of us alone, well, outside of maybe Peg, who could get Ma to change her mind once she'd made it up. You mean we're to let this chance go? No, I mean we'll all see Ma together. Hmm. Well... It's the only way. We'll have to act together. If she sees all of us are set on this, maybe she'll get over being stubborn. But that'll mean wasting a couple more weeks. I got a business to look after. If I don't get home pretty soon, you I'm... You figure gonna... that feed store of yours is more important than this? No. Well, I'll let my cafe go, ain't I? Yeah, sure. Well, then if Ezra and me are willing to put in our time, you ought to be too. Well, how about Harvey? I'll see him today. I'll tell him this is taking us a little longer than we figured. And I'll write Mother we're coming. I'll get the letter off before noon. Well, all right then. This is very decent of you. Huh? What's ailing you? When I came here, I told you that Mother was ill. I practically begged you to take the time to see her. None of you could. Oh, no, you were too busy for that. But now, now that it means money to you, everything's different. Now, Peg, you... Well, I'm going along. And if I can spoil your rotten schemes, I will. A week later, Ben, Ralph, Marge, and Ezra sat in the parlor of the great rambling ranch house they had known as children. Ben and Ralph sat on the stiff sofa, staring at the toes of their boots. Marge sat alone and silent. Ezra, pacing the floor, obviously ill at ease, Stop suddenly and... Well, well, why don't we go in there? She don't want us yet. She said she'd let us know. Where's Peg? No, she's in there. Yeah, thought as much. Getting in her story, I suppose. Sure, I guess. Well, she ain't gonna spoil things. I won't stand for it. Uh, she will if she can. If she does, it's because you let her. Huh? Oh, you make me sick, all of you. Grown men and behaving like scared children. She's our mother just as much as she's Peg's, isn't she? Well, then, why in heaven's name just stand around and do nothing? Go in there. Don't wait for permission. I didn't see Peg waiting. Doggone it, Marge, you're right. Thanks. Sure, sure, that's right. Why are we waiting? I, uh, I'll go along if the rest of you will. Well, come on. You too, Marge. Sure, why not? I'll go in there. Ma! Uh, you, you got out of bed. Peg, what's your letter for? Ma, give me your arm. Ben, get a chair. Ezra, don't you touch me. Leave that chair where it is, Ben, or I'll take a cane to you. But, Ma... When the time comes, I can't get around my own house without help. I'll be ready for my grave. But I ain't ready yet. Now, don't you help me either, Paige. All right, Mother. Well, you can't do this. You're sick. Oh, You'll Ben, have... yours was a simple-minded one of the family. Took after your pa. Stand aside. For heaven's sakes, I know what I'm doing. Be careful, Ma. <sighs> well, there... I made it, didn't I? Ma, I've been worried. I'm glad Jane is bad off as Peg told us. I'm glad too, Mother. Sure, it's, it's great seeing you on your feet again. <laughs> we thought you that... You could fool me. Well, what well, do you, you mean? You can't. It's high time you learned it. Now, wait, Ma. I don't know what Peg said to you, but Jane you... said nothing. She didn't have to. I ain't simple. But, Ma... Our thunderation quit all trying to talk at once. There, now. Now, I'll say my say... You're here to get me to sell the valley. I won't. You want me to go back on my promise to Miguel. I won't. And if you think you're going to change my mind, don't. Curtain falls on the first act of our Lone Ranger story. Before the next exciting scenes, please permit us to pause for just a few moments.
to continue our story. Three days passed. In an office in a distant town, two men discussed the events that had occurred at old Sarah's ranch house. I've got Ezra Yates' letter with me, Taylor. He says they can't do a thing with their mother. Stubborn old fool. Yeah, she's like most of those old timers. They'd rather break an arm than a promise. As long as she's alive, that breed's going to have the valley. No, Harvey, you're wrong. I'm going to get to the valley. Well, I don't suppose she's got long to last. Not that way. Yeah, but I... Harvey, I wonder if you know why this means so much to me. I'm not sure that I do. It was my father and his brothers who would have killed old Zack eight years ago if it hadn't been for Miguel. Yeah? At the time Zack came west, my family controlled all that range up there, every last acre of it. Zack took it away from them. He filed on the only part of the range where there was water. And you don't have to be told that the rancher who controls the water rights controls everything else. So that's it. I promised my father someday I'd get that range back. I will. And it has to be while Sarah's still alive. I want her to know that a tailor evened the score. All right. What are you going to do? Miguel won't leave, Sarah won't sell. What's left? You know, I wouldn't be disappointed if something happened to Miguel, Harvey. I owe him something, too. I can't say that I'd be disappointed at all. That's an order? Yes. If Sarah suspected... That... She won't, Harvey. No, I'm quite sure she won't. In spite of Sarah's warning, her three sons and Marge continued to besiege her with every type of argument that occurred to them. It was impossible for them to leave while they still hoped she would change her decision. And one morning, Ezra returned to the attack with... Look here, Ma, I aim to have a talk with you. Uh, again? Sure, I know you don't like it, but it's got to be done. Why? Why? Because you're not treating us fair. You ain't considering nobody but yourself. And Miguel. All right, then, and Miguel. But the way you act, you think he meant more to you than your own kin. Sometimes, Ezra, I ain't so sure about what he does. Leastways, you don't ever hear Miguel complaining. He takes the little he's got and he makes it do. He's happier than any of us. Instead of finding fault, it wouldn't hurt you to copy him. Why couldn't you give him land somewhere else? Because that's where he wants to be. What the? Mrs. Yates. Mask. And don't be alarmed. A crook. Get out of here. Get off or I yell for help. If you don't get oh, out of... Oh, for pity sakes, Ezra, can't you hush just once? If he's going to rob us, we can't stop him. What you... I'm not an outlaw, Mrs. Yates. I've brought you news. You have, huh? What news? Miguel's left the valley. What? Is that a fact? Yes. Stranger, I don't believe it. He wouldn't go without telling me first. I know he wouldn't. But he has. He and his wife are gone. And everything they owned with them. But he That's couldn't. not all. I've been inside his cabin. I found this. Give me that. What is it? A note. I found it on the kitchen table. Ma! Well? He says he's clearing out because he knows he's standing in your way. He says to go ahead and sell the valley. He says he wouldn't want you to lose out on account of him. Stranger, did you look around any when you was there? I did. Was anything suspicious? Was there... Well, was there any sign to say that maybe he didn't leave willing? The cabin was all in order. It had even been swept and scrubbed before Miguel left. Ma, don't be foolish. Why, this note tells you he went on his own accord. Yes, everything was in order. Nothing looked suspicious. Except one small detail. Huh? Eh? What was that? Miguel can't write. Four mounted horses followed the desolate trail, leading always deeper into the wilds north of Salt Creek Valley. The horses kept to the trail in pairs, those at the rear carrying Harvey and a roughly dressed companion, while the two in the lead were ridden by Miguel and Rosa. Although Miguel and his wife could manage the reins of the horses they rode, the wrists of each were securely bound. Senors, how much farther is it we ride? Impatient, Miguel. We have ridden far, Rosa. She is very tired. It is nothing, Miguel. Well, we're almost there. Here, pull off the trail and cut left. Oh, the back of that arroyo. See, si. this way. There is a cabin. You know what? Oh, but see. Si. Many time I have come here when haunted. <laughs> Good. You'll feel at home. You will not say why you bring us here? That do it, Miguel. I'm sorry. You'll find there's an old friend of yours in there who'd prefer to tell you himself. A friend? All right, right up. Oh, 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 oh. Oh. 
All right, get down. Yeah. Yeah, right, keep watch outside, Buck. All right, boss. Go ahead, Miguel. Walk right in. See. Si. <laughs> the senor Phil. Come in. You can wait with Buck, Harvey. Right. Surprised to see me? Si, senor. It's a long time since we last met, Miguel. It has been many years. I wasn't much more than a boy. But I'm afraid you'll find I have a long memory. I do not understand. You were my father's enemy. Your father, senor. It was muy malo hombre. Bad, huh? Well, by the standards of some of you cowardly fools who run to the law every time you're hurt, perhaps he was. At any rate, he was bad medicine for those who crossed him. That was well known. In fact, Miguel, that was a characteristic of all my family. Do you understand? What do you mean? He paid his enemies back. I do the same. And my father's enemies, though still living, are my enemies. See? You were on Zack Yates' side against ours. If it hadn't been for you, my father would have killed Zack before he ever got a foothold here. The Senor Yates was a fine man. Me, Miguel, I am most proud to have been of service. <laughs> but things have changed since then. All things change, Senor. It is so for everyone. At that time, you helped Zack take our land. Si. Now, you'll help me regain it. And Miguel. Yes, senor. I'm afraid I can't let you live to tell the story. No, no, Miguel. Oh, Mi Rosa, do not be afraid. Now, we are old, yes. It does not matter. What must be, will be. <laughs> Sarah Yates, frightened by the news the masked man had brought, sent Ezra to summon her family together. In the meantime, Peg did her best to calm her mother's fears. Mother, you mustn't worry so. Why, just the fact that poor old Miguel can't write doesn't prove anything. He, well, he might have had someone do it for him who could. I mean, he might have asked someone to do it. Well, there could be a dozen explanations. Thank you, Peg, but I guess it's no use. No use? Telling me not to worry. I thought a heap of Miguel. Rosa, too. It was just like part of the family. You're, you're talking as though they were... They were... Dead? Yes. Maybe they are. Oh, no. And maybe... What, Mother? Maybe those to blame ain't so far away. Mother, what are you saying? I think you understand oh, me. Oh, you can't think that. Ain't I had cause to... No, Mother. Listen to me. The boys think too much of money, yes. I'm not excusing them, but... But you can't think they could have had anything to do with this. You just can't. I've sent for them. Why don't they come? They'll be here soon. I want to talk to them. Of course you do. But please, Mother, please promise me you won't let them know that you suspected them, even for a moment. You're my favorite, Peg. You've always been ever since you was just a young un. But I can't give such a promise. I've got to know. But right. well, they're coming now. Howdy, Ma. Hey. Hello, Ezra boys. the news, Ma. Is there anything you want us to do? We talked it over on the way here. We know this part of the country pretty well. We thought we might go hunting for Miguel. Not yet. What's the matter, Mother? You look... The way I'm feeling, I reckon. Sit down. But we want Sit to... down. Sure, Ma. Ezra? Yeah? You've kind of been the leader since you come here. Leastways, you've pestered me most. So I'll talk to you. Sure. What is it? You've been mighty anxious for me to sell the valley. It's been plain to see that if Miguel would clear out so I wouldn't have to break my promise, you'd find it pleasing. Well, we only said... Wait. That... Ezra, would you and Ben and Ralph have been so anxious for Miguel to get that you'd help him? Ma, what do you mean? You think... Quiet. That means... Just give me a straight answer. That's all I want. Ma, I swear I'm still that... talking to Ezra. You ask for a straight answer, Ma, and you'll get it. We tried to bribe McGill to leave. Maybe we even threatened him a little. But hurt him? Make him leave? Never in a million years. And that's the truth. It is, Mother. I've heard everything the boys have planned from beginning to end. Ezra's told you the exact truth. Didn't I tell you, Mother? Boys, I believe you. Thank you. You've done a heap of things I ain't liked. You've got faults I don't guess you'll ever get over. But as far as I know, you've still got your first lie to tell me. Then why don't you let us go look for Miguel? 
If he's to be found, we'll find him. We'll look everywhere. Go ahead. Fine. Men, get the horse. Right. You, Ralph, get the extra cartridges in the storeroom. You bet. I'll go and eat. What, the mess. In with you. Blast you. You're choking me, ain't you? Uh, good for you. Bless you. That's Mr. Harvey they've got. And here's Miguel. And Rosa. Oh, what a world. Hold still. Hold oh, still or I'll tie you. Taylor, where'd you come from? Uh, he's the fellow behind this. But Harvey works for him. Stranger, you made a bad mistake. Mr. Harvey's head of the railroad's coming through here. He's the fellow who wanted to buy the valley. It's your mistake. But we ain't... Tonto and I have already checked on this fellow. We were told the railroad was planned. We rode to the state capitol to find out about it. You were tricked. Huh? Tricked? The company he headed existed only on paper. It was formed just to cover up for Taylor. Once you'd sold the valley, this so-called railroad, would have turned around and sold the valley to Taylor. The company would have been disbanded. And Taylor would have held your water rights, Mrs. Yates. Taylor, you rotten schemer. I planned this for a long time, Sarah. And if it hadn't been for this masked man, by heaven, it would have worked. For all the sense as were in the other show, it would have. But we couldn't know. Because the thought of a fortune coming into the family blinded you to everything else. Taylor depended on that. Greedy men are the easiest dupes for swindlers. What I've said a thousand times. But Miguel and Rosa, how did you find them? When we learned Taylor was behind us, we knew Miguel's life would be in danger if Sarah didn't sell. Tyler was watching every moment. He was behind them when they took Miguel to the cabin. He left signs on the trail that I could follow. But, but why didn't he stop them when he saw they were taking Miguel prison? Because of my orders. Uh-huh. He had orders let them go as far as they liked, unless they made an attempt on Miguel's life. We wanted them on a charge that would keep them in jail for the time they deserve. They'll be doggone lucky if they don't get the rope. Well, how about my cash? I went and put good money into that fake company. So did I. Well, I'm glad to hear it. Serves you right. I hope you never see a penny of it again. But, Ma! And if you don't, then maybe the masked man's taught you a lesson you won't forget. <laughs> Outside a peg, you're a right useless lot. But you got my blood. You ought to be able to learn. The story you have just heard is a copyrighted feature of the Lone Ranger Incorporated.